Hey, good morning. My name is Kate, and I'm one of the chaplains here, and I say that because I know we have a lot of visitors here today. Mm. <laughs> Wahoo! Um, if you are here visiting, we want you to know that we are glad that you're here, checking it out. We would love for you to become a part of this community, so welcome. One quick announcement, if you are... Um, at all interested in being a women's small group leader next year, um, applications online, I would love it if you would consider that. And also today, you'll notice that some people are wearing stand-up tees. We've got the retro version from last year, and then we got this year's red version, um, and our <laughs> worship team was wearing them too. And stand-up is a com campaign that's not simply contained on this day. Today is a day we happen to be wearing t-shirts, some of us, but Stand Up um, is a culture we are trying to cultivate here at Hope College, where we stand up against um, stereotyping and bullying um, and discrimination, and we stand up for one another. Um, and it's really a culture of reconciliation. And so it is a gift this morning, and God's great timing, that we have Curtis DeYoung with us. And Curtis is many things. He is a college professor, so he gets college world. Um, he is a parent. Um, he is a pastor. Um, but he is somebody who has thought deeply about reconciliation um, and has lived into that in great ways. And he has been a gift to many in our community already. And I am thrilled that he is here now to share God's word with us. So would you please give a welcome to Curtis this morning? Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Good morning, Hope. It's, it's great to be with you. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is what you call really front row seats. Yeah. Great. Wow. It's just great to be here, and I hope you're comfortable if you're in the aisles. And uh, like I said, it's a joy to be with you on campus today. Uh, and I'm honored to be wearing this shirt that was presented to me uh, to also be a part of this uh, stand-up uh, against prejudice, stand-up for each other, stand-up for hope, and, and the, the idea of I am, that all of who I am contributes together to make hope what it is. And I think that's a powerful message. This morning I'm going to uh, talk for a few minutes about the topic, Jesus, the Radical Reconciler. Jesus, the Radical Reconciler. And my goal is to introduce you to this side of who Jesus was. My text comes from Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. I think that's short enough and memorable enough that we can say that together. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus of yesterday was a radical reconciler. Jesus' life, yesterday's Jesus' life, began, I don't know if that's quite correct, yesterday Jesus' life, but the life of yesterday's Jesus began with dramatic events surrounding his arrival. Birth in a barn under scandalous circumstances, visits by poor shepherds from Palestine and rich magi from Asia, and then nighttime travel to the continent of Africa to find refuge from Herod's threats of murder. It was as though at the arrival of Jesus, the whole world gathered around in some sort of cosmic reconciliation. That was yesterday's Jesus. Yesterday, Jesus was born into an extended family with strong women, Elizabeth and Mary, and strong men, Zachariah and Joseph. It was as though it took an extended family of both strong women and strong men to raise Jesus for the mission that was ahead. Oh, well, that was yesterday's Jesus. Yesterday, Jesus was born the descendant of the Hebrew people. Hebrew heritage found its roots in Asia, Africa, and the indigenous people of Palestine. The family tree of Jesus was no different. It was multicultural and 
multiracial. Some biblical scholars have called Jesus an Afro-Asiatic Jew. An Afro-Asiatic Jew, speaking to the context and culture that his heritage and lineage brought to him. But not only was Jesus born into a family with a diverse heritage, he spent most of his childhood days in Galilee, the most culturally diverse province in first century Palestine. Jesus lived in a province that also included people from Assyria, Babylonia, Egypt, Macedonia, Persia, Rome, and Syria. Using today's language, Jesus grew up with Asians, Europeans, and Africans living nearby. And Jesus spoke multiple languages. As a Galilean Jew, he would speak Aramaic in his house and in the streets. He would speak Hebrew in the temple and synagogue. And working in his father's business, he would need to speak Greek to communicate with the neighbors and the business folks they were interacting with. It was as though it took a multiracial, multicultural, and multilingual setting for Jesus to be certified as a Savior who could authentically reach all people. That was yesterday's Jesus. Yesterday, Jesus arrived on earth as God in human flesh, knowing all power and privilege. Yet he let go of all that and took on human flesh as a poor, oppressed, first century Jew under the domination and occupation of colonial Rome. It was as though Jesus needed to know privilege and powerlessness so that he could bridge the gap between rich and poor, so that he could preach good news to the poor, so that he could proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, so that he could release the oppressed. Well, that was yesterday's Jesus. Yesterday, Jesus taught about the inclusive nature of the gospel through parables then people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will eat at the kingdom of God. He taught about the inclusive nature of the gospel through his sermons. My house will be a house of prayer for all nations. And he taught about the inclusive nature of the gospel through his daily life as he reached out in friendship and solidarity to people outside of his cultural background, whether they were Samaritans, Romans, or indigenous Canaanites. And he traveled with women in his entourage, unheard of in that day, as friends, as co-workers. And in fact, there were women that were the fundraisers for his ministry. Two of the gospel writers note this. It's as though Jesus couldn't help himself. He was a radical reconciler. Everything about who he was and how he was brought up and how he lived his life speaks to that. That was yesterday's Jesus. And yesterday, Jesus died on a cross so that we might be reconciled to God and each other. And it's amazing that at the cross itself, we see this reconciliation theme continuing to flow because it's an African, Simon of Cyrene, who carries his cross, and it's a European, a Roman centurion, who spoke words of faith, truly this is the Son of God. Yesterday's Jesus was buried in a borrowed grave that was sealed and surrounded by all the power of the Roman Empire. On the third day, women disciples discovered that the grave was empty. Soon all of his disciples heard a resurrected Jesus telling them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. The Jesus of yesterday was a radical reconciler. Now, if I had more time, I could go into more detail and try to be even more persuasive. But hopefully you know where I'm headed with this because Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, today, and forever. But something happened after yesterday and before today. The story of Jesus as an oppressed ethnic and religious minority under the colonial rule of Rome, the story of Jesus as a person in solidarity with folks who were marginalized, the story of Jesus as an activist for social justice, the story of Jesus as from a multicultural heritage and raised in a multicultural neighborhood, the story of Jesus as a radical reconciler was co-opted, reconfigured, and reissued. It was so radically altered that people who were slave masters, dictators, 
crusaders and colonizers could claim to be Christians, followers of Jesus. It was so radically altered that people who were homophobic, racist, and sexist could claim to be Christians, followers of Jesus. It was so radically altered that people who were even terrorists like the Ku Klux Klan could claim to be Christians, followers of Jesus. Well, I am here to tell you that Jesus has not changed. The Jesus of yesterday is the same today and the same forever. So what about Jesus today? Some years ago, maybe some of you still have one of these WWJD bracelets. What would Jesus do? I think the better question is, what did Jesus do? And then that answers the question, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus would do today the same things he did yesterday. Jesus would be hanging out in the same places yesterday as he did today. I know on Wednesday you had a chapel where some folks put the hoodie on to show an act of solidarity with a current conversation that some of you may be paying attention to in the broader U.S. society. A conversation about a particular incident, yes, of Trayvon Martin, but a larger conversation. It does race still affect the way we view people, and does a young African-American male wear a hoodie get racially profiled or not? Jesus would understand that because at 17, when Jesus was 17 years old, he was a religious ethnic minority in the colonial empire. He was a Jew that, as a Howard Thurman used to say, could just be kicked into the ditch. Jesus understood that. And as a 30-year-old in ministry, Jesus was in solidarity with all people who were facing injustice. Oh, but I only got like two, three minutes left, so I got to move along here. And I hope you don't mind if I don't linger too long in today, because I, hopefully it's evident to you by what we talked about for Jesus of yesterday, what we need to be about today. But you students of hope, and this is a message for you, you are also a part of the forever Forever speaks of future. Tomorrow begins forever. Ten years from now is a part of forever. So I want to talk about what this means. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow in the future. If you've done, if you're aware of this, I assume you are, that demographically the United States is rapidly changing. We haven't seen the 2010 census stats yet, but they will probably reaffirm what we know from before but that in 2008, two-thirds of people in the United States were white, looked like me. But by 2050, only 46% of the population will be white. 2042, they say, is the year that whites will drop below uh, a majority in the United States. So that means our country will be more persons of color than white people, and among that group, Nearly a third of the country will be Latino. The rest, of course, significant numbers around African Americans and people from the continent of Africa, black people, Asian folks, Native Americans, Arabs, multiracial people, and on and on. We are going through a great shift. 2023, those 18 years and younger will be predominantly persons of color. Babies being born in the United States are already whites or less than 50%. This is the future that you are moving into. You will be the leaders. Hope, you who are students right now, will lead the transition for us into this multicultural, multiracial reality in America. So in my final minute... This is what I want to say to you. Embrace the future. Don't complain about diversity and reconciliation efforts done on this campus. You'll someday be thankful. You need your college education to prepare you for this future, to get you ready for this future. And remember that Jesus was and is and will always be a radical reconciler. And you need to walk with Jesus into this future and how to do this work, and how to be a leader for Christ. So I invite you this morning, in my last 30 seconds, to follow Jesus as a reconciler, 
as an influencer for reconciliation. I hope that you can say with Jesus, I am reconciliation. God bless you.